Well, hello everybody. Billy Lowe is back. I um, want to give you a little update here. I picked up a project. I'm going to call it Project LT1 Short Block. The story on this is uh, the engine was sitting in a damp garage for probably 20 plus years as a short block. The heads and in, uh, intake and all that were missing. And uh, this friend of ours uh, who lost her husband uh, about 10 years ago had this thing laying around she says Bill come pick it up get rid of it for me I said okay so I picked it up and I really couldn't tell too much about it it was kind of covered with muck and didn't know exactly what it was but I did find the uh, the block had uh, these high dome pistons right here and uh, these high dome pistons were sticking out along with this eight inch balancer. And I said, this is something, but I didn't know what it was. I couldn't read any numbers. So I said, yeah, I took it home, cleaned it up a little bit, discovered that these pistons were so seized that I really had to bang on them to get them out. They're shot. I'm going to have to replace them. Uh, probably go 30 over. Um, it's the timing chain cover and the oil pan. Uh, as you see, I cleaned them up and painted them, you know, and, and uh, I'm prepping to get things ready for uh, taking it to a machine shop to have work done. What one thing I noticed, these are what they call pink rods. It's got the pink rods, <laughs> which are LT1. And uh, the other thing I noticed, and I don't understand why Chevrolet would put this nylon toothed gear on the timing chain but uh, it's a piece of junk it's going to be replaced with a double roller when I put the engine together so let's look at the numbers and we can figure out what this thing is I'm gonna walk you over here to the engine block and it's in good shape I got a tiny little nick uh, yeah in number seven probably are gonna to have to go 30 over but I'm gonna order the pistons when I get them first thing you will look at is this number right here and uh, if we can read it there it is uh, three nine seven zero zero one zero that's common 350 Chevrolet block throughout the 70s but by that number alone you don't know what year it is you know it's an orange motor so it's an earlier 70s the late 70s they, they painted I think they painted them blue the uh, next code we look at is right here, and these, I, I don't know how it's going to come out, but right there, I don't know, it ends up being an F10 space zero. I looked, had to use a magnifying glass to read it. And that's the casting date, F being uh, June, one zero is 10, and the last zero, year, 70. So we know that this was cast in 1970 in uh, early June, or mid, you know, June 10th. And then over here was the gold find. And if we look, you can see the engine block is stamped with a code V0613 CTB. Here's the CTB right there. 13V06. That's the 6th, the 13th of uh, June, and uh, it was cast on the 10th and machined on, built on the, on the 13th. CTB is the big find, that's an LT1. So this is an LT1 engine that's, that's going to get rebuilt, and I'm going to take off camera for a minute, and I'm going to show you the underneath. There's one thing I wanted to add. Um, 
CTB is the uh, LT1 code for the Z28 motor, not the Corvette engine. The Corvette engine had a different number. And if you also notice, over on this side, there's no VIN. Had this been a motor that went down, uh, was installed uh, at the assembly plant for a car, there would have been a code like an A and then a VIN number. Uh, the uh, fact that it has no VIN tells me this was purchased over the counter. And I know the, our friend's husband was big into cars and he did drag race and I, uh, she said that this engine he had purchased for racing. So this was an engine that never made it through production uh, for an automobile. It could have been put in a Z28 or a, a, a the Nova. I think they also put it in the, in the Chevelle, but correct me if I'm wrong. I, I thought it went into those three cars. Uh, but uh, anyhow, it's definitely an LT1 uh, block. Okay, we're back on. Uh, this is the bottom end. And as you can see, it's a four bolt main, four bolt main engine. Only the three center uh, bearing caps are four bolt. The front and the rear are still two bolt. But I'm got this thing prepped for uh, taking it to the machine shop. We're going to have it boiled and I want to have it magnafluxed and possibly bored 30 over. Uh, I did measure the cylinders, they're 4 old bore. Uh, and uh, a line honed and, you know, generally freshened up. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what I did in preparation to bring it to the machine shop. And, but let me flip the engine back. Okay, the one part I didn't mention is the crankshaft. And uh, this is a Chevy uh, forged crank. One thing I did notice on the crank, and I think we can see it here, very, very slight nick. When I took it apart, that was there. That has been there since the factory assembled. Right here, this nick. I'm going to have the crank polished at the uh, machine shop, plus they're going to do a balance. So I think this nick can be left alone. I don't see any reason why we have to you know, cut the crank to get rid of it because I don't think it's going to cause any problem whatsoever. Okay, another thing, here's the bearing cap. One of the bearing caps I just showed it to you. It's a four bolt main. Uh, what I did with this bearing cap, and if you can look, I have a little number two that I've etched on there and I numbered all the bearing caps. I only had to do the middle ones. Uh, the front one you can't mistake and the rear one you can't and there's an arrow on the cap right here It shows your front so the very caps are marked in case any of you folks are wondering So they're going to go back and it's, it's imperative that they go back in the same place over here Yeah, we have the windage tray that I found and I cleaned it up looks pretty good It's about ready for service. Maybe some very slight cleaning up left and all of my hardware for installing the crankshaft. And if you can see, we have the studs. You know, these are for the studs for uh, the windage tray. It's gonna be quite a motor. Alrighty, let me go over what I've done so far in preparation for the uh, taking this to the machine shop. Usually, in the past, I have just torn these engines down, removed the, cr the crank, the cam and so forth and broken everything down and brought it to the machine shop and had them uh, do the you know do the uh, core plugs and uh, remove all the oil galley plugs and so forth and I said you know I should be able to do that uh, and they're not very difficult to do so what I did was I actually purchased uh, a uh, tool and then it's over here let me show it to you I got a cam bearing removal and installation tool cost me 30 something dollars and I figured I could put in remove and put in my own uh, cam uh, bearings I picked up some parts 
you know, that, that are going to go into it when it, it comes back from the machine shop. You know, we have the, the core plugs. By the way, they're not freeze plugs, they're core plugs or casting plugs. Some people call them expansion plugs. I like to call them core plugs. Um, I got a stud for the oil pump rather than the bolt because you can have problem with bolt lengths. With the stud, you don't have to worry about a bolt length. You know, you put the stud in and boom, you're done. Also, your oil pump drive. Take that old oil pump drive that came with the Chevy and throw it away. I also got right here uh, these ARP uh, nuts. Um, I'm going to use those on the connecting rods rather than the original hex nuts. So, what I did with the block, I knocked out all the core plugs. Now, there's something you need to know on a small block Chevy when you knock out core plugs. Save this plug and this plug for last. <laughs> I did it the wrong way. I knocked this plug out. It fell down behind the engine where this other plug is. And I had to finesse and finagle for a while to get it out. There is not enough room for this plug to come out through this hole. What you're able to do is you're able to either move it forward to this hole and remove it here or remove it, I don't know if it, you can see it, but in the back, you've got your two plugs in the back, back here. I, you can't see them, but you can remove them there. In any event, save these two for the last ones to remove. You knock them in, slide them over, and you're able to finesse them out. The uh, galley plugs, the oil galley plugs, uh, let me flip the engine real quick here. Let me see here. And I need a little little help with a pipe. There we go. These, these rear plugs right here, a lot of people put heat on them. I didn't do that. I found it, I tried heat and it didn't work. I ended up drilling them and using an easy out. They came out relatively easily. Uh, same thing with the core plugs up here. You have, actually this is a plug or where your oil sending unit goes. This is a plug here. And there's a plug down here where your pump, uh, where your uh, filter is, filter housing. Okay, those have to be removed along with a plug right here in the front, eighth inch plug. So, plus you have to knock out the three in the front here. These three have to be knocked out. And, uh, a lot of people, <laughs> one fellow says, take three push rods, put them in here after you remove these plugs, put three push rods in there. Well, I, I didn't see his video until after I had done it. What I did, I simply took a piece of threaded rod that I had laying around, stuck it in there. I'm not gonna stick that. Stuck it in there, tapped them right out. <clears throat> Also, the cam bearings, they came right out. And the cam plug, to remove it, I took a pipe before I removed the bearings. Just put a piece of pipe in here, ran it through, gave it a couple taps, popped right out. I think you could use a broom handle. So, breaking it down is relatively simple. There's one plug I didn't mention, and that's the hidden plug. And let me show you where that is. Okay, the last plug, and I took my piece of threaded rod and laid it in there, here, um, is up in here, where your rear main bearing cap goes. It's up there a couple inches, has to come out, has to go back in too. All right. You'll have trouble with it if you don't put that plug back in. But that knocked out very easily. 
again I took the threaded rod laid it in there gave it a couple light taps with a hammer and it popped right out okay for the front these these plugs came out they pop right out I tapped and I'm going to reuse the uh, actually I tapped these with a quarter inch pipe tap and I'm going to put in uh, regular plugs pipe you know pipe plugs quarter inch uh, and uh, I'm not going to bother putting those uh, little caps or back in there uh, but there's something I want to show you so let me go off camera again and this is something that I read about and I've never done this before and I hope it works out alrighty this is something I read about and believe it or not this is a drill bit I don't know if you can see it it's a number 68 drill bit that I got and I drilled a hole I'm using a brass plug for the oil galleys that feed the lifters and I read that there was a bulletin out about air being trapped and causing the lifters you know hydraulic lifters not to uh, uh, pump up so I said let me try it you know I never did this before either but it isn't going to hurt anything and it's you're going to dribble a little bit of oil out of there but that's just going to go into the timing chain and you only do it for the two I got brass plugs primarily because uh, I could drill them a lot easier than uh, steel and I drilled the two of them without breaking the drill bit I'm very proud of myself uh, so it's something to think about I mean it's not necessarily uh, there's a bunch of engines running around out there um, and I I know some of you guys are going well the LT1 had a solid lifter motor and you know solid lifter cam and you're right it, 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 there was a solid lifter cam that was wiped out otherwise I'd reuse it but it was white had flattened out lobes and uh, threw it out uh, I'm re I would replace it if I were to buy a cam but I happen to have a 327 350 horse cam in real good shape and a real good set of lifters with very low mileage on them and I'm going to be using those uh, in this engine it won't be the LT1 high revving engine but it should kick up to six grand plus and it should be a real good street motor for a for a street car but anyhow this is something to think about if you're building an engine a small block Chevy okay now we're going to talk about cleaning the engine and I've got a, an assortment of brushes here this happens to be right here if we look at it this happens to be a cleaning brush for a 22 caliber uh, rifle um, that cleans the uh, crankshaft you can run that through the oil galleys in the crankshaft and get them cleaned up with this yeah get them and I'm not really terribly concerned about getting it spotless before the hot tanking because it's, you know the hot tanking is going to do a lot but I did run solvent through all the passages I want to get any loose dirt plus when you do your t drilling and tapping you get little chips in there so you, you want to blow that out real well you don't want any dirt in this engine when you go for assembly uh, you cannot get an engine too clean um, another thing I didn't mention was when you tap these don't go too deep uh, you know I didn't mention that I just give you a caution on that because if you go too deep there there are oil galley ports that you could end up plugging up and you don't want to do that either that would be a disaster when you go to start the engine not getting oil to some of your bearings and that goes for the front and the back if you have to retap the back or want to clean them up just you know if you want to tweak them a little bit in the back go ahead but uh, I wouldn't do too much and uh, as far as your oil galleys I ran brushes through everything but there's something that we can do to an engine and I'm going to talk about that for a second let me just set this down and try to move this a little you've got a bunch of bolt holes and a lot of guys will go out and get a tap and I don't like taps for cleaning bolt holes I prefer the uh, 
these right here. Let's see if we can. This is a. This is actually a thread chasing cleaning tool. Inexpensive. Use these. Do, you know, try to avoid using your taps because your taps you can end up taking meat off the thread. This didn't take any meat off. You know, just simply. Well, that's the wrong size. Oh, Duh, Bill. You just simply work it in by hand. And if you go through into the water jacket, remember, a lot of these come in through the water jacket. It's no problem. You, you know, you just unscrew it out. So don't be afraid if you go through the water to the water jacket. These come right out. And they clean the, clean the threads without taking any meat off. You have two types of holes. You have the through holes, like your head bolts, which anybody can figure out. You want to put sealer on those head bolts when you put it together. Otherwise, you can have antifreeze come up through. But you have the second kind of hole is a blind hole. And a blind hole, uh, you want to run it down. Don't put any force on it. Just run it to the bottom and clean it up and take it out that way. And as far as cleaning, you know, all your lifter bores, your galleys, Everything I ran uh, a little bit of solvent through. I didn't. I didn't worry about the piston, uh, the uh, cylinders, because uh, you know they're probably going to be bored out. I'd just be wasting my time cleaning cylinders that are going to get bored. So besides, they got to be honed anyhow and cleaned up. I'm going to have the machine shop do that. But right now we're in pretty good shape, uh, ready for the uh, machine shop, and I'll keep you advised on. How we're going to assemble this. I'm not in a rush to do the engine. I don't have a car for it, but it's kind of a project that I've picked up in my back uh, workshop here. It should be a, I'll find a car someday uh, and uh, put this in there and it should run really well. Now for a very quick review of what I've done. Uh, totally disassembled the engine. I removed all the core plugs, removed all of the oil galley plugs, uh, cleaned the oil galleys in the parts up a little bit in preparation. I removed the cam bearings um, and I also ran the uh, thread chaser or thread cleaners through every uh, you know thread threaded hole on the block and uh, after it comes back I'm going to go through the same procedure again only I'm going to be washing it with soap and water and really really scrubbing it down and uh, getting the block assembled ready for the pistons. Uh, what I didn't tell you is I'm naturally going to have it balanced um, uh, when I get the new I'm going to go with the same pistons that were in there except they'll probably be 30 over and uh, I'll have it balanced uh, with the uh, 350 horse cam it should uh, be a real good strong mid-range car I'm thinking something with 355 gears um, nice driver you know nice cruiser uh, cruise night car I don't know what I'm going to put it in. My dream car would be a mid-year Corvette that needed a motor, but uh, we don't know if that's going to happen or not. Those things are awfully expensive, mid-year Corvettes. But they're, they're, they're beautiful cars, and that's why they're so expensive, I guess. Anyhow, that's where we're going with this project, and I'll keep you up to date on uh, when I get it back from the machine shop.